Hello, so in this video, we're gonna deal with photographs and how you would put photographs into iMovie and how you'd use them. Don't forget if you like the video to subscribe to the channel and like the video then in the end. So what we're gonna do is, in this section, we're gonna talk about putting photographs into your iMovie and how you could deal with them then when you put them in. So I've started up a new event here. You can see on the left hand side I have a photos tutorial event just like we would have done earlier and if you want go back and look at the other lectures. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at how we would put the photographs in. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can take photographs that you have saved on a hard drive, photographs you've saved maybe on your computer or photographs that you have on your camera or your phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import media. At this point if you were taking them from your phone you could plug them in. You can also, you can plug your phone in, you can also take them from your photos app, so the photos program on, on your Mac. So we're going to go to import media here. Once we go to import media, I'm going to go to my desktop here on the left hand side. At this point, if you had a phone plugged in, you would see it popping up there. If you had a hard drive plugged in, I'll actually plug in a hard drive here just to show you the way it will pop up for you. So you'll see now, so just imagine for talk's sake that I had photographs on my hard drive there. When I plug it in, you'll see it popping up here on the left hand side. So we are going to take the photographs from our desktop. And what we're going to do is the desktop, there's the hard drive coming up there. Now you can see Mac Mini, I have it called. So we're going to take them from our, our desktop. If you were using a hard drive or a USB, you would use one of these options that you have here. I have a pictures folder here. Inside that folder, there's a couple of pictures. We're only using four or five pictures. We're gonna just click on it, and I'm gonna import all. So it's a good practice, maybe before you put them in, to have your photographs organized in a folder like that, just to save you going and looking for them when the time comes. So we have the photographs here now, and you can see it's only six, seven photographs here. And the photographs that I took, similar to the ones that we used in the, the videos, and they're just of, of scenes. There's one in there, duplicate. If you have one in duplicate like that, you can click on it and press the delete key on the keyboard or you can select it and go to delete media. So it's gonna take it out. It's gonna say, do you wanna delete it from it? And we say yes. So we have six photographs there. It's not about quality here it's, or quantity. It's gonna be about quality. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in, show you what to do with one of them, and then you can use that over and over again. So when we're putting in the photograph, it's not the same as putting in a movie. You don't have to select a portion of the photograph. It just selects a bit of the photograph. You click on the photograph and then you can drag it down with your finger or you can click on the small plus. So you'll see it now, there's a plus there. And what that'll do is it'll put it down into your timeline down at the bottom. So when we click it, I'm gonna click on the plus. You'll see it puts it down to our timeline at the bottom here. I have my screen full screen, just in case that you think it looks a wee bit different from your own screen. I have it out full screen so you can see here it puts the photograph in it looks now as if the photograph is after going in one two three four five six seven eight times they are frames okay so it's showing you frames each one is half a second long so it's just saying that it's showing the photograph for that amount of time there's a break at the end of the photograph you can see similar to a transition again have a look at the other uh, videos if you want to know more about them transitions and the photographs are just showing so exactly what's shown on the playhead. You can see in my preview area up here on the right hand side is being shown there. So we're just going to put a couple of photographs in. You can see it has the orange line in it here and that just shows you that it's being used. What we're going to do is I'm going to click the rest of the photographs. I'm going to hold down the control key, the command key, sorry, on your Mac and I'm going to click them all and I'm going to drag them in. So what I'm doing is I'm just clicking on it dragging them all in and you can see now if i make my timeline smaller so you can see it i now have one two three four five six different videos in and you can see they're just going to play like a slideshow if i was to play it back in the background there's no music there at the time you can see it's right the way through and it's just showing the different pictures now can you see the way them pictures in the preview area there they're kind of zooming in and zooming out that's what's known as the ken burns effect now Ken Burns is an American filmmaker and he was made famous for doing archive footage. So what he did was instead of having a picture sitting still on a screen, it would do this zooming effect in and out or on, from different areas. So with the Ken Burns effect, what it does is it has a start area 
So it starts at one area of the photograph and zooms into a finish area. So we'll have a look at how we, we would do that and, and how we would change them. So that's the photographs in. Now these could be photographs of people or scenes or whatever it is. We're just gonna let it, it play there and see. Now clicking on a photograph. So just say for example, this photograph that we have here. So we have a photograph there, it's just of, of a boat and the Ken Burns effect, you can see that if I drag it from one area of the screen to the next and I'm just scrubbing across it, you can see what it's doing. It's just zooming in on the photograph and it's just zooming defaultly by from one section into a smaller section. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to go from one part to a different part. So clicking on, on the photograph to make sure it's highlighted. We have the crop option up here at the very top. So you can see it's that crop option here. Once we click on the crop option, it's gonna give us options for the picture itself. Now you can see, I'm gonna scroll in just in case you get it a wee bit hard to see. We have start and end. So what it's doing is it's starting when the picture is that size. You can see it with the, with the four corners around it. And it's then ending when it's that size. So what we can do is I'm gonna do it very drastically. I'm gonna take it that instead of it starting and ending, so it's gonna start with the picture. You can see the broken line around it here and it's gonna end with this picture. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna really zoom in on this boat. So I'm gonna scroll back out or zoom back out for you. I'm gonna put my playhead here, just maybe before the picture a wee bit. Watch this preview window up at the right hand side. You'll see it drastically zooming in. So we click it and it's zooming straight in onto that size of a picture. So you could use this if you wanted to, so just say for example, you have um, a picture with a crowd, so three or four people sitting on a couch, and you had a wide picture of it. What you could do is you could start the picture off wide and then zoom in to them people. So you can imagine the music panning. Each of these videos at the minute, I'll scroll in again so you can see it. Each of these videos at the minute are going for, or these photographs are going for four seconds. So you can see four, 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 four. So each of them were, remember the frames earlier on were half a second long. If we want a picture, so just say for example, this picture that we have of the boat, we'll just use this as an example. If we were to play it through, maybe four seconds isn't long enough for it to zoom in and for people to actually get a feeling of the picture. So what we could do is instead of having it for four seconds, I'm gonna scroll in so you can see it again. I just be wary that people can't see. Do you see the double headed arrow that we have here? So what I can do is I'm gonna click and drag it out. So now it's on for five seconds. I'm gonna leave it maybe to eight. We'll put it for eight seconds. So now this picture is going for eight seconds. And remember, it's just been shown on the timeline for eight seconds here. So you can see these are four, this one's eight. So now earlier on, when we played this picture through, it's still gonna zoom in on the same area of that boat. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna zoom in at less uh, speed, so it's not gonna go as fast because it has a starting point and a finishing point. Earlier on, it had four seconds to get from point start to point end. Now it is eight seconds, so it's gonna be able to go that wee bit slower. So again, if you're watching the preview window, if we play it through, you see it's still scrolling in or still zooming in, but it's just taking its time to getting there. So you can create maybe a slower effect if you want. You can also change things around. So again, we go to maybe this picture here. We could, if we wanted to maybe pan across a photograph, I'll go to the cropping options at the top. You can see my start here. So this is my start section. I'm gonna pull the start like that. So that's my starting photograph. And I'm gonna click on the end bit. And I'm just gonna put the end same size as the start, but I'm gonna put it going from the, like that. So you can see that's the picture when it starts. We can even, if we want, we can make it smaller and this one smaller, just so you can see a more drastic effect. So that's the picture at the start, that's the picture at the end. So that's gonna be my start picture. That's gonna be my end picture. And again, I'm gonna put it on for a couple of seconds longer so that it takes a nice effect so it's not going as quick. So if you're watching your preview, or scrolling across it and you can see what it's doing, it's going from right to left across the picture. Now, what would happen if we had that picture smaller? So say, it, or the time less, so three and a half seconds. Remember I said earlier, there's a start point and an end point. So now it has to get from the start picture to the end picture 
in a quicker time. So what it's going to do is it's going to be fast going across it. So you can see now it's fast. You don't really see it. So you need to, to make sure that it's it's on the, the screen for the right amount of time. An ideal time, I think, now this is my opinion, nothing else, is roughly seven seconds. So seven seconds gives people enough time to be able to see the picture, but it's not on the screen for too long that they're getting bored of it. So that's just different options with the picture. If we wanted a picture just to stay on the screen, so for example, if you thought this picture, or maybe this one, if you thought that was a nice picture and you don't want it to zoom in or zoom out, what we can do is we can tell, tell it just stay there. So we click on the picture, we go to the cropping option. It's probably important at this stage to, to um, state that iMovie as by default does that Ken Burns effect. So it uses from left to right or zooming in and out. It, it's a random thing. So at the minute you can see here it has Ken Burns selected. What we can do is we can go to fit. So if we click fit up here, fit just says fill the full screen. So when we go back, I'm going to preview it. So you can see I've just gone back a wee bit before the picture starts. We click on it. When it gets to the end, you can see it's just a stationary picture there. So if you wanted a picture just to be in a certain section, we can do that. The other thing we could do is if we take this picture, for example, here. So it's just an, another picture. And we only wanted to focus on one area. And we wanted to stay at that area of the screen. We could click on Crop. Instead of Ken Burns or Fit, remember Ken Burns does the sway effect. Fit keeps it the full screen. Now crop to fill. So what crop to fill does is it just crops the picture. So you should be at this stage, if you're using iMovie, you should be okay with cropping. But just in case you're not, cropping just means that it cuts unwanted areas out of a picture. So you can see the gray area in the background. That's not going to be shown. It's only going to show this area here. And then what we do is I'm going to click back here. Or we can click on the the button here there was a reset button I'll show you or a confirm button just to tell it that you're applying that crop so when we play the, the video through it only focuses on that area so you have none of that unwanted area of the background if you wanted to for example then have the likes of a title across a picture you can do that too so again the same as putting titles across the movie we click on the titles area up the top here and we can just do whatever title that we want and we click it and we drag it down on top of the movie like that. And we'll just put very creative of me a boat. So when it plays the music through or when it's playing it through, you can see it comes up there and it stays down at the bottom of the screen. Again, that's probably a wee bit short. So we leave it a wee bit longer. So all I did there was I clicked and dragged it so it's a wee bit longer. So we play it back through, it comes up and you have your picture there and it says what's on it. Now you can be more creative with your names than I was there. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about now is adding music to these pictures. So we've all the pictures in like we did earlier and what we want to do now is put music to them. There's a couple of different ways. We can use the import button at the very top here. I'll just zoom in so you can see the import button. It's that down arrow. Or we can use the audio section there. So we were in My Media, now we're in Audio. Your audio shows you any songs you have in your iTunes, or you can see they're all there, you have different playlists. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import some media, so I'm gonna click on that Import button, and it's gonna take me now, I'm on my desktop. I have a bit of music here, you would go to wherever you have the music saved, whether it be on a hard drive or whatever it is. I'm just gonna say Import it, and you can see it imports this bit of music here for me. So once I have the music in there, you can see down at the very bottom, I have a play line or a timeline here at the bottom with a small music note. I'll again, I'll zoom in just so you can see the small music note. What we want to do is we want to take a bit of music and we're going to place it down there. So I'm just clicking on it and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to put it down to the very bottom. Or again, we could click that plus button and it will put it in for us. Okay. So you can see there, it puts it in for us right at the very end. If you were using a bit of music from iTunes, so a bit of your music, again, I'm gonna use the same song, except this time it's coming from iTunes. Watch when I click and, and drag it in. So you can see it puts it straight in there the same way. So the exact same way, we can split the clip here if we want, and that will give us that we just have the music to the very end of our music. I just clicked on it there and pressed the delete button. Couple of different things we can do then. 
once we have the music in we can ramp it up or down so you can see this music if I play it for you you'll hear it's loud straight away what we can do is we can maybe click it the small ball so I'm gonna scroll in for you just so you can see it you can see there's a small ball there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it in like that and what that's doing is it's telling it not to start straight away ramp into it so if I click on it there you can see it's only getting so loud we can also drop the volume down so this is the volume line that we have across the middle of it so if I click on the volume it's a hundred percent I can take it down to maybe 32 it'll not make it as loud and if I play it now you can see it's going through there with the different pictures so that's putting the music in make sure if you're putting music in that you do know whether it's copyright free or whether you can use it or not it's not hard to find that out you can check it on YouTube YouTube have a load as I said of free music that you can use Um, if you're using it for yourself it's okay to, to use music but just be wary about putting something up on the internet if you don't actually own the copyright to it so at the last step we want to do is we want to export this as a movie so we would click on the export button which is up the very top the share button very top right hand corner once we click on this it's going to give us options so you can see it's going to give us file file will allow us then to export it as a movie and once we click on it you can see it's 27 seconds long it's 68 megabytes in in size it gives us options to put it to 1080 and whatever we want if I click on next you would always name it give it the proper name that you want to call it and a description once you click on next it's going to start creating the movie so you could put it I'm going to put it to my desktop there just to have it it's going to start creating the movie now and you'll see up at the right hand corner it won't be long doing it so as it's doing that we're going to finish up the video so do be sure to share the video if you like it subscribe on YouTube because that's the way you get the notifications of any of the new videos that we're going to be taking up and make sure you give it the thumbs up to like it so I'll see you next time and we'll do some more. Thank you.